Alright, since a lot of students ask me about this question, so I decided to make a, a short video about these questions. Uh, this this is a 2018 May June uh, paper 1 3 for IGCSE MF. So yeah some some student if you take the uh, the other IGCSE paper, I guess um, all of you will have the same paper. If you are SPM student, this function video might help you to understand better about function. So, but what's so special about this video is like, okay, the question says diagram A to D show four different graphs. In each case, the whole graph is shown and the skills on the two axes are the same. So we just assume the, the skill on the Y axis and the X axis for four different graphs here are the same. All right, so over here, you, you can see four different diagrams, obviously, and then Place tick in the box in the tables to indicate which description, if any, to apply to each graph. There may be more than one tick in any row or column of the table. So over here, they ask you four different questions. Uh, which one is not a function? Which one is one-to-one -one function? And which one is a function that is, is an inverse? And the last one, a function with no inverse. So, but before you start to choosing here, you need to know Okay, how how do we call it as a function? And like, they have any rule to to uh for us to actually label it as a function. So therefore, the most important thing is uh the type of function over here. So when we call it function first, it must it must be one to one relationships. Uh, that means one x value can only go to one y value in your graph. The second, we call it as a function, must obey the many-to-one type of relation. Alright, what does it mean by many-to-one? That means you can have many x answer x1, x2, x3, but all lead to same y value. That means many x go into one y value, we call many-to-one, then it's a function. So when we score one-to-one, that means x go to y. But what does it actually mean in graph? So I give you some idea for one to one. So example, if I have a graph here, and this graph is a curve or a straight line, this one is definitely is one to one because you can see, let's say I call it at a three, uh, then he can go to one y value only, let's say it's four. So you can see the, the value three here can only go get one value in this graph. So this one is called one X value, go into one Y value. We call it one to one. So therefore, this is a function. So you, you can try some further value. Let's say I try the six here. Maybe you get a six here. So that's mean you, no matter how, uh, which value of which point you take, one X value can only lead to one Y value only. This is one to one function. And I give you some idea about many to one function. Many to one function example. So if I have a curve like this, and this curve over here, you can see my one y value can give me so many different x answer over here. Do you see that? Let's say this y axis and x axis. So you can see maybe this is negative one, this is two, this is five, this is 10. That's a random number, it doesn't matter. So you can see, let's say this y is four. So you, you can see when y equals to four, it actually give me so many, uh, in this case, it actually gave me four different x value. So you can see many x value go into one y value, it's called many to one. So this one is basically considered as a function as well. Okay, but if we have a graph like this, then this is not a function because what? You can see one, y, uh, one x value actually lead to two different y value, isn't it? So let's say this x equals to negative two, y is one and five. So you can see when x equals to negative two, your y will be one and your y will be five. So this kind of graph we call one to many. When one to many is not a function and many to many also not a function. Many to many normally we will see is a circle. So when they have a circle, so you can see two, uh, one y value can go to two x value and one x value can go to two y value. This is many to many, also not a function. Right, okay. If you understand which one is the function really, then it's quite easy to choose the function uh, for the first question. Because the first question asks uh, which one 
uh, which one is not a function. So because you can see C and D basically is one to one function because no matter how you find the coordinates on the curve over here, your one X value can only go one Y value. So when I say one to one function, I know C and D very obvious. And not a function obviously is the B because over here you can see my one X value actually lead to two different Y value. So this one is basically is uh, one to many. So one to many is not a function. So when we say not a function, so it will be B. All right, this one will skip first because this one is, is the reason why I make this video. Okay, the last one, a function with no inverse. So over here, we say function, we have two types, one to one or many to one. But in order to have inverse function, it can only be one to one function. So therefore, many to one cannot have inverse. So therefore, in this case, in order to have the inverse function, it must be one to one function. Alright, so this is something very important. Oh, of course, in some of the past year paper, you might see the quadratic equation or some other equation have the inverse and you might ask, is a quadratic equation, then this one is uh, many to one. How can it be? Uh, how can it have the inverse function? So normally, if this is a quadratic, okay, so quadratic cannot have the inverse, right? But but if the question at the domain, meaning give you a range, uh, the or or a domain, it it might can have the it might will become the one to one function. I give you some example. When x is bigger than zero, when x is bigger than zero, in this case, I only take this part. So you see, if I only take this part over here, that means I ignore about the other side, then it becomes one-to-one -one function already. Same idea, the question can say when x is less than zero, when x is less than zero, then I only will take this part and I ignore the other side, then this one becomes one-to-one -one function already. So most of the time, in order to make the quadratic have the inverse, so normally we will actually will cut, will cut the uh, quadratic into half from the maximum or minimum point. Right, this is something quite important and yeah, it's quite important to know. So over here, a function with no inverse. So therefore, a function with no inverse, most of the students will choose A or B, A and B. But in this case, you cannot choose B because they say a function. And B is not considered as a function, so I will only choose A. So therefore, a function with no inverse is A because A is many to one function. So many to one function cannot have inverse. All right. Okay, last part. A function that's, that's, that is its own inverse. What, what does this mean? This means your fx and your f inverse x both will have the same function. All right. So I give you some example. So if fx is equal to 1 over x. So if I try to find this the inverse for this one, what I will do is I will make my fx become x and then I will make my x become y. And then I want to make the y as a subject in order to find the inverse, right? So y will equal to 1 over x. So therefore my f inverse x is equal to 1 over x. In this case, you can find out my fx is same with my f inverse x. This is what is mean. A function that's his, uh, that this is its own inverse. So you can see this function actually also is the own inverse. So because they have the same equation. All right. And for this, for this, uh, this row, obviously I know the answer is C, but let, let me explain why is C. Actually C is a quarter of the circle. Okay. If, if you can see this one is a whole circle, you just like cut out the, the one over four of it. So equation of circle is basically is X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So in order to oh, to get a semicircle, let's say I only want to get a semicircle over here, uh, I need to make y as subject. So y will equal to r square um, minus x square and then square it. All right. So therefore, okay. In order to get only one quarter, definitely he changed the uh, he he uh is actually give it a domain lah. Mean it only say something like x is bigger than zero like like what I did just now. So from over here, let's say fx is equal to square root of r square minus x square. r is any constant value over here. So if I want to find the f inverse, if in order to find the f inverse, I will do what I did just now. I make fx become x and then make my x become y. 
then right now, if I want to make the y and the subject in order to find the inverse, you will find out actually I get the same equation. So over here, I will get x squared equals to r squared minus y squared. So y squared equals to r squared minus x squared. So y will equals to square root of r squared minus x squared. So therefore, I can say my f inverse x is equal to square root r squared minus x squared. And you realize my f inverse is same with my fx. Both of them are the same. So therefore, this one explains why c will be the only answer for this case. You might ask, how about d? d basically is uh, fx equals to negative x cubed. Yeah, it, it should be some equation like this. If x cubed, you want to find the inverse, right? The, your inverse should should get uh you, your inverse should get some something like r cube root of net. Yeah, your inverse is uh, make this one y, make this one x. Yeah, should get ne negative. Should get negative cube root of x. So they are not the same. So therefore, I cannot choose d in this case. Right, I hope this short video actually can give you some idea on what is function, what is not the function, and, and which function actually have its inverse, and what is the reason behind it. Alright, I hope you find this short video useful. Anyways, if you have any comment, please post below. I will try to reply when I have time. Anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.